Yeah. Welcome to Get Your Popcorn Ready, hashtag GPR. It's your boy Hatch in the building with your man, T.O. What it do, what it do? What it do? We, we got, got our, our man, Marcellus mm -hmm. Wiley, coming to the show today. Big Wild, what's up, baby? Come howl at us. He'll be here in a minute. San Diego, 10-year vet. I know him as that dude. That dude. That dude. When did you, when did you all meet Marcellus? Bye. Oh, man, I can't, I can't recall exactly when we met. But uh, he was a force on the field, though. All I remember is number 75 coming off that end. I, you know what I remember? That little bowling thing he used to do when he got a sack. Oh, he did that little yeah, bowling yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you, <laughs> hey, everybody always has sort of like their signature move. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I had yeah. a number of them, so I don't really just have one, you know, because, you know, that's wow, what I do. Yeah, you, you got know? 153 of them. Wow, yeah, you know, so. Right but yeah, but as a defensive lineman, yeah. defensive end, yeah. you know, sacks don't come, you know, no, a plenty. Easy. But for a guy like Marcellus Wiley, that dude, and that's why he's that dude on speaking speaking for yourself with him and Jason Whitlock. Speaking. Marcellus Wiley coming to the building. Hashtag GPR. Get your popcorn ready. Subscribe on the Himalaya app or wherever you get your audio or video podcast. Like, oh, who was top three, whatever, five, whatever. It was insulting time. to even have a super VIP of Hall of Famers. Like, Hall of Fame's enough. Why y'all gonna do a super VIP? Like, right, right. extortion of bottles. Like, they like, you gotta have 50 bottles to be in this club. <laughs> like, which like, one what? is it? What's the criteria? And he didn't get in? No, I was good, good not getting in. That's what, <laughs> hey, he ain't in. That's why we gonna bring you to the what's popping scenario, right? The what's popping episode, the GPR. Get your popcorn ready. We're here with Marcellus Wally. Yeah. The What's Poppin' segment, baby. Got yep. Marcellus in the house, yes, baby. What it yes, yes. Look at this. Amongst friends, yes, I say. Yes, sir. Man, look at y'all, boy. Y'all done man. cleaned up in here. Hey, look at it. No, hey, you cleaned hey, up. Hey, you cleaned up. And rightfully hey. so. Fox, said, Fox money. Fox himself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mr. Fox himself. I love it, man. It's hey, fun. I ain't, I ain't worried. I stay camera ready. Oh, he he had to put the makeup on Does he and do act all like that. I don't know him. I'm just saying that's what <laughs> I don't, they, I, exactly. He, he like you ready. To the he party. had to get right. ready. Oh man, y'all stop! I know y'all got a little cheat sheet here. Right? Oh, this is yeah, gonna be interesting sure. since y'all know so much about me. We, you uh, know what, what we gonna get out of me? Yeah. <laughs> for a camera, hey, it's gonna be fun. We want it all out of you. <laughs> we go. want it all. Let's go. Cause I know, I know the the number one thing is like we all mm. went to small schools, right? Yeah. And of course, our transition to get into the NFL and play professional football, and then our transition out. It's kind of been similar, except right. you- That you, we do have in common. That we do have in common. <laughs> that we do have in common. <laughs> we, do, we do, right, right. So we wanted you to take a little bit on that. Yeah, man, uh, going to Columbia, obviously that's not the yellow brick road to get yeah. to the NFL. And yeah. it was just weird playing with guys who treated college football like PE. Like mm. they literally was just going there to yeah. check the box, mm -hmm. no future goals and aspirations to go in the league. And those were my teammates. So mm -hmm. you had to buy in to the culture, but to them, they had an expiration date. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. I was yeah. like, I'm trying to make it from here. You got no choice. N no right? choice. Yeah. So I remember one day, it was one day that we were sitting there, and our schedule started later than the Power Five, the big schools. And we were sitting there on a Saturday. We had practice while everyone else was playing. And Florida State was on. And I remember watching them. And then I looked at my teammates. We were at the dining hall, and their mouths were wide open like, I was like, hey, dog, yeah. we on the same level as yeah. them dudes. That's us right That's there. That's us yeah. right there. Yeah. Obviously, we can't beat them. Of course. But of course. you can't have that mindset right. that we're already beat. Before so you, you yep. fast forward, man, I, I was blessed to get drafted at all, let alone second round. Mm -hmm. And you walk into the league, and you have to translate that confidence that you had at the lower level and bring it up there with the big dogs. You can't get intimidated. Yeah. They didn't bring the program yeah. with them. Right, they right, brought right. themselves. <laughs> so, you know, going to the combines and pro day, you start to realize that some guys were hiding behind the school. Yeah. And some guys were just ballers. And right. you just go through those growing pains. But I wouldn't have changed a thing, man. I got the best of both worlds. Got a great uh, academic reputation, I like facts, to call it. You facts. know, people just assume I'm smart because I went there. All right. Student well, athlete. <laughs> student athlete, if you will. In the right order, though. Yeah, right. Student, exactly. student athlete. That's why right. I said it. So student it was athlete. all love, man, and got 10 in and then trans translated that into the real world. Right. And uh, I just tell all my, my boys, man, athletes especially, those attributes we learn from playing the game mm -hmm. of, of work yeah, ethic, yeah. discipline, pain tolerance. Yeah conditioning, not just physical, but mental. mental yeah. 
Come on, man. That's life. Don't That's go, what the yeah. life is. That's what your life is. And go into the real world and, and, and use the bring same, that yeah. instead yeah. of leaving it like, oh, what well, well, I'm going to do next in this world? You know what to do next. Have it go do applicable. those exact same things. Yeah, have it be applicable to. Yeah, man. And I after. see so many guys struggle, man. They 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 leave like those, those attributes with the ball instead of taking it with them. Yeah. So, you know, it's been good. It's been a blessed role. Be out here making, you know, athlete money, but just talking. I take it. Ooh, I ain't mad at you, my dog. Somebody pay for this. That <laughs> <laughs> you think that you would have went higher in the draft or played longer if you would have went to a bigger school? Ooh, that's a great question. Definitely higher in the draft. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember some of the scouts evaluators were like, "Man, you look like you can do something." Right. But who are you playing against? They don't look like it can right, do shit. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so he's like, right. look at these accountants and judges yeah, yeah, and CEOs yeah. out you, here you playing you against the Ivy League. So right. I knew that that was going to come back to haunt me. Uh, but if I were to went to a big school, the only bonus would have been the fraternity, the mm -hmm. brotherhood. Yep. Like imagine if I went to USC, whatever. Man. I would have had. So you said you didn't have the brotherhood where you were? No, Not like I USC didn't. brotherhood. Because it, look, think about it. <laughs> I get to Buffalo rookie year. I'm either relying on veterans to show me the ropes or some other rookies and youngsters who don't know it mm -hmm. fully yet. Mm -hmm. Whereas at a big school, they have their alums that already are in the league, that played yeah. at the league. They already have that looking fraternity out looking out or coming back. No one came back from the NFL when I was at Columbia no. to say, let me show you the ropes. So I had to learn everything on the fly. I felt like the windshield, like bugs just hit me in the face. Mm -hmm. And until like Bruce Smith and Phil Hansen saw enough game in me, Damn. I was on my own. I had to fend for myself. So going to a big school, you can get those resources, not only in facilities, but in connection. You got 10, 12 dudes in the league all balling or just on teams to give you that understanding and exposure. Yeah. I ain't had that. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I don't think, I think I was the first person drafted from Langston University since Hollywood Henderson. Damn. And that was like 76 or 78. I don't even like know where that. Langston University, where is that? Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. Oh. Nobody knows where Chattanooga is neither, but <laughs> yeah, they know where it is now. Nah. 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 That's what I was gonna say. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? I was like, until you right Oklahoma, <laughs> Ooh, you out there winning, in the huh? Country, boy, Ooh, you the country. Out there. Mm. Hey, you like said, it's, it's part of it. You talking about big fish? I was, fish. I'm still the big fish, B. Don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? I'm just. <laughs> I see T.O. and Hatch. It's supposed, it's supposed to be Hatch and T.O. Yeah, that don't even they sound right. Don't don't like, that don't even, I can't get that. Yeah, yeah. I like can't like get that. Peanut butter and jelly, you yeah. know, oh, no. ham and cheese, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you ham know, and I, burger. Like, yeah. you know, it don't matter. It don't match. It don't match. Yeah, yeah. It exactly, exactly. don't match. Right, that's oh, that's fine. I ain't mad. I no, ain't even mad. But um, so how about the transition now? Did that whole. Yeah. Transition into you know yeah, the yeah, TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because obviously you were on Sports Nation. Yeah, and then from Sports Nation, ESPN affiliate, and then you transition mm -hmm. now to to it's like the the big fish, which is Fox. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody was really watching Fox like they're watching Fox now. It was almost uh, you right. know out of a conglomerate. ESPN was at the at the hierarchy of of, of media. Real now, Sports, Fox yeah. is one of those entities. Yeah, man, it's been blessed. I, I say. When I when I got out the, the the league, I was thinking, man, I'm gonna do like all the vets told me to do: retire, get fat, party, mm -mm. Uh, count your money, and golf. Right, right. And I did that for like eight months. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got fat for sure. Right, right, uh, right, right. I partied. It was just funny running around L.A. You know, you in you in a Rolls Royce and Ferrari, and you're mm. 32. I'm retired at 32. Mm. Ain't we doing all that? I ain't even been in a Ferrari, bro. <laughs> see, or see, Rolls Royce. You living in Atlanta, though. See, you, you living in Atlanta. Yeah, see. I would. Yeah, 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 it is a little different. Yeah, yeah, LA. LA. Your car is your house, baby. Right. You show, you right. show up in ballet, right? It's okay. home. Right. So I'm riding around just, just living. Like, wow. My peers are all still at work. And mm. I'm making up errands just to do, just yeah. to floss, just to hit circles around the block, just to... Get out, out there, the house. Mm -hmm. out the house. And then I started to lose purpose and passion really for life. Mm -hmm. Everything was great. So many highlights behind me. And then I just had to make sure that I kept my mind on the grind and the prize of making sure highlights were in front of me. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't just at 32 say my best years were in my 20s. Can't say that. So can't say that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to be a father, just to be a future husband at that time, just to be a person, I, I just couldn't sit there and say, my highlights were yesteryear. Right. So all that running around in circles for eight months, 
Finally, I was like, man, enough of this. Yeah, and, do that, no yeah and ESPN, we had a great relationship already. I was kind of more candid than the average cat in the locker room, in part because it felt like it was an outer body experience. Going to a small school, Columbia, mm -hmm. I wasn't tired of football and big business football. A lot of my teammates coming from the big schools, they already hated the media from like the rookie year. Right. Tired right. of it. I was like, damn, y'all. Yeah. Like a dude come in, he's like, so how'd you play today? He's like, man, you did you watch? Right. Like, hey, you know? like, exactly. I'm with you. Right. He asked me how'd you play. I was like, like I know, thought you had a good game. Hey, it was amazing. Third down, did you see that? I right, almost right. jumped off sides, didn't right. I'm, right. I'm like telling them everything. Right. So it, it helped me foster relationships. Yeah. And ESPN came a calling once again. And two weeks later, I was hosting shows and doing shows and it's just awesome. sticking to my script, man. And that's blossomed into to where I am now, and I just tell everybody, just find your signature, find your voice, man. It's simple as that, and just do that. Because when I got in the game, everybody was trying to be broadcasters. Right, right. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to. Man, that ain't gonna work. No, nah, you're nah. gonna be in that pack. You're gonna be in that herd. And you're gonna be forgotten. So, just find whatever your uniqueness is, and just go out there and flex it. And it's been fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've watched the show a, a number of times, and I think, you know, for me, it's encouraging to see a black man, obviously educated you know, very articulate, being well versed in a number of topics. And I think what you're presenting, you know, to a number of these athletes that are now in the league and then they don't know what they may do after, you yeah. know, get out of the league, they can, you're setting that table of what they can be, how you've transitioning. And again, you've basically, you've, you've spoken on that. Yeah. And so now like a lot of guys now that are in the league, they may not, like I said, they may not know what they can become or what they can do post football. What would you what what advice would you give guys now? I mean, just think about where the league is now. I know there's a lot of hot topics out there about African Americans being head coaches, coaches and not Rooney fulfilling thing, those yeah. those positions. What what advice would you give guys now that they're living in the moment and they're not really thinking post football hmm. um, about some of the things that going they're going to encounter? So for me personally, like, and I'm sure Hatch has gone through it. I'm sure you've gone through it. A lot of these guys, they don't know post football, like we don't have health insurance for life. Mm -mm. After five, five years, years yeah. it's a wrap. And then you can apply for an 18 month extension. Mm -hmm. And then for me personally, they don't realize the leverage that they have, not only just for, you know, partnering with the NFLPA to get even guaranteed contracts, but even negotiating health insurance. Yeah. You know, how can. What what advice would you give these guys that are playing now to to make some of these things happen? Yeah, man. I mean, look, there used to be a, a old school mentality around focus in the '80s, especially when I was playing Pop Warner high school. Uh, if you didn't eat, sleep, drink, breathe football, mm -hmm. you yeah. weren't committed. Exactly. You weren't right. focused. Right. Right. And that's an old school way of illustrating what focus is. So that's one dot on the wall, football. Oh, mesmerized by it, and I'm focused. New way, new thinking is throw a thousand dots on that wall mm -hmm. and know how to prioritize, mm -hmm. know importance, and that's the new focus. So these guys have to think about their next in the now, mm -hmm. and too many guys don't. Because too many guys are football players in their oh minds, in their bodies, in their that's character, it. in their heart. That's it, that's all they got. I played football. I never was a football player. I, I was like, look, I got talents. I'm going to figure what they are. Oh, I'm pretty good in class, and I'm pretty good on this graph. Simple as that. I'm going to ball out, give you full commitment. But at the same time, I know this will come to an end. It, it, it's a finite game. No matter how tremendous you are at it, I was done at 32. 25 years of my life playing football from Pop Warner all the way to the pros. Now and then, now what? Yeah. So... You know, if you look at life, it, it, it's so funny that if you're not prepared for those moments that are going to be in front of you, almost to the point where you fail forward, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the pinch. So a lot of guys don't take advantage of the resources in, in the present time. Here's the thing about it. Our coach used to always laugh at us. And, you know, you're thinking you're going to play forever, going to make all the money in the world. Nothing's going to end. The fairy tale lasts forever. And Coach used to say, don't say hello when it's time to say goodbye. Mm. And that hit us because at first you're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. And he's talking about the networking, the mm -hmm. human capital, the resources. Use it while you can. Right, right. Because when you come in as a rookie and you start balling, everybody on your head. Right, right. Then when you're a vet, proven vet, all pro, pro bowler, whatever, for a future Hall of Famer, 
They all around you. The accessi accessibility. Yeah. Everybody there. We go into those lunches where a CEO's sitting there. They all and, there. And they all in there. And, hey, Tara. Hey, Matthew. And you know I used to remember all my teammates doing this. Man, what's the table I got sit? Yeah. Man, go over there. I don't want to go talk to them I don't to talk folks. this dude. We VP of what? I don't care about this right. dude. And sitting there pouting. Giving off that energy, and the guy's like, "Nice, here's my card." Yeah, call never, me. Yeah, call me. Do, do that and come never do the intern. Back, never nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and then guess what happens? Year twelve, and some rookie done took your job, and you're like, "Oh, I'm on my third when team, fourth go. team, rubbing these knees like yeah. this." You're yeah. like, "Oh yeah. no, God!" Yeah. And guess what? You start, you find that card and try to call that dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He knows it's been six years, yeah. and he knows somebody he, took your place. Yeah. Just letting you know how that changes the imagery, how that changes the optics, and that changes your opportunities. So and, and I just tell what's, cats what's, to take what's, advantage. What's worse than that is even when the people who aren't CEOs and vice presidents, right? They're still just regular lower level guys. You yeah. still got to give them love and respect right. because they're going to be the CEO so and vice president when you're 35, 40, 45. Same. And they can give you that little 25 racks to come do the speaking engagement. But yeah. since you blew them off because he was a peon at the time, yeah. that's not what you do. Like you say, you treat them all with that same respect. Yeah, man. I mean, when we're young, obviously youth is wasted on the young. Uh, we just think it's all about us. money and yeah. us, us and capital, what that exchange. But Human capital, man, I see how that runs the world, you know, as much as just having relationships. Uh, and those relationships are not just to always extract something from, it's just to have exposure to something else. Mm -hmm. So many athletes just are not exposed, man. Yeah, you may have went to Vegas to play in a tournament, and you may have went to New York to run into track meet, and, and uh, who you meet, man? We sitting up in a hotel. Yeah, in the want, room. In the room. Yeah. I don't want to do nothing. I'm going Why to a restaurant here? and a strip club. Yeah. Who are you, where, you ain't met nobody. Went to the mall and, and flexed. Right, right, like, right. Okay. Right. So it's it's and it's simple anecdotes like that. If cats just take advantage mm -hmm. of the the here and now, it's a lot better, and you can protect yourself in those rainy days going forward. But I think uh, I get what you're saying. But sometimes, what if a guy wasn't he wasn't groomed or he understands how to create those relationships. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I mean, growing up, I put myself in like, I didn't know how to, I wasn't, I wasn't a great communicator. Like I was pretty much a product of my environment. You're so when still I- still not a great communicator. That's fine too. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why that's I need fine. to be hats and T.O. Okay, well let's see how this show goes with just get your popcorn ready right, with right, 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 right. <laughs> Back to what I was right, saying. Right. So, how, like for me, I was a product of my environment. So. Socially awkward, so it was like uncomfortable, kind of mm -hmm. being around, you yeah. know, business people, whatever, or you yeah. know, not be having a dad and a mom, you know, those two parents to kind of help groom you or whatever the case may be. Maybe that's probably part of that. Maybe it's a cultural thing. Yeah, but what also, what do they say? Be better than your best excuse. Right. And T.O., you embody that, man. Like, look, I don't care how good you are in football. I don't care how tremendous Hall of Famer. Us non Hall of Famers, I don't care who you are in the pecking order. I do know that you have to work on things. Mm -hmm. Like you come in, you're like, yeah, I could kill the nine route. Uh, I gotta work on this button hook. Mm -hmm. yeah. You worked on it, right? Yeah. Because you didn't have any holes in your game. Not uh, when we, we, our coach used to, when we played against T.O., Coach would say, if that? he catches the ball, that's, that's when the hell begins. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, for real, real talk. <laughs> I always tell cats when they be talking. No, I get into so many arguments about who's the best receiver ever, and I'll be like, dog, right here. Right? Just got into one last week with my boy Omar. <laughs> and the point of it is, you still had to work. Boy, you going to look at him. He right. This, he this right guy, he on, he on a different planet right now. He gone. I got to tell the truth. Always. <laughs> look at, look at my look man. At, <laughs> all I'm saying is, uh, yeah. you worked on the things right. you weren't great at. Right. You went to the lab and worked on your left hand. Mm -hmm. Guess what you knew also? Socially, that's my left hand. So I got to work are, on that. You have yeah. to work on it. You should yeah. grab a coach and grab a mentor. Grab someone in, in human resources, someone who can help activate and work on those routes that you're not so comfortable with. Because if not, you just burn through so many opportunities. And those opportunities are whether it's money, whether it's just employment, whether it's just, look, I could connect you. You, you could be sitting there somewhere on a 5% loan thinking you like, ah, I'm good. Right, and somebody's right. like, I got that 3-7. Right. Like, huh? <laughs> but you didn't know that <laughs> because you didn't know them. So it's just situations like that I've seen so many guys just step on and then don't don't take notice of that opportunity. So 
not to dive too deep into it, because right. we hung out when you were playing. Yeah. But um, you dealt with a different animal as well. Like, mm -hmm. you had so much coming at you that it may have been tougher to maneuver. Yeah, navi right. Navigate through it. Yeah, because I didn't, I, bro, like, like I said, we all start out the same playing field, but I never, our vision and our aspiration was probably different. Like I said, I never aspired to be a professional football player. I never thought I would be a play beyond the collegiate level. Mm. So just with my competitiveness, and like I said, I got to Chattanooga on the heels of somebody else that was being recruited. Right. So then my love was for basketball. So even after my freshman year, you know, the coach, the freshman year, uh, he wouldn't allow guys that were recruited to play football. He wouldn't let them play any other sports. Uh -huh. So like he ended there. up getting fired the, fir the, the first year. So yeah. the second year coach comes in. We didn't do well during that season. The season ended early. I go up to the office, and, and I'm like, yo, can I walk on and try out for basketball? Damn. So he was just like, you do know that these guys that are playing basketball, they're being recruited for that. Like, <laughs> for real, they right, right, right. right. He's like, yeah, they're getting scholarship. I'm like, yes, sir. And he said, do you, did you play in high school? I'm like, yeah, I played in high school. He goes, look, you can go give it a shot. He said, if you can make our basketball team, that'll tell me what type of athlete you are. Mm. Yeah. You ain't lying. Three years later, Boom. I played sophomore, junior, senior year. Yeah. Because all football players are nothing but failed basketball players. All of us. You too. Especially yeah, you. him. Yeah, he's, he, 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 yeah, he, definitely, he definitely failed. <laughs> we ain't yeah, nothing. For sure. Trust me. You failed. If everyone had it their way, ain't a single soul <laughs> other than maybe Ray Lewis playing football. <laughs> I ain't met another person unconditionally loved the game of football. That shit hurt. Don't lie. So we all wanted to be <laughs> wanted basketball to be players. Jordan. Wanted Empty to be backpacks. Yeah. Girls think we cute. Flip flops and socks. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the dream. But around eighth grade, reality hits. I'm not six seven. <laughs> I'm not six, six seven. seven. <laughs> that's all right. Hey, my you go knock on your door. Yeah, but my you a late bloomer, huh? You yeah, I'm, I'm a late. I'm I'm different. You still blooming? Still. <laughs> see what you see what still. I'm saying? No. Still. I'm talking yeah. about. Let can get go. buckets. <laughs> I know every celebrity game. I, I, he guaranteed three dunks. That's Four it. Four air balls. That, <laughs> and still, and no, yo, 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 Jay got way better. Hey. Yo, Jay got way better. I'll give you that. I thought he was gonna make the team. I, what did you try for the Lake? The, no, no, no. I did I, I played, no, 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 I played, I played in a semi pro the uh, semi pro league. I remember yeah. that. I was like, T.O. got buckets. Yeah. But it, it's a whole different animal. No, it is. Like I said, if I would have applied myself just as I did with football, yeah. I definitely feel like I would have made it. Yeah. And like I said, I and when I say make it. A lot of people are oh, they did automatically think, oh, I would have just been in the starting five. Yeah, yeah, like no. you're the Do next they LeBron, know that there's like, like 13, like 15 guys on right, the team? Right, right. Yeah. And a lot of these on this team, you don't even know who they are. Yeah. But you made the right choice because you're a Hall of Famer in football where you would have been. I would have been. He would have been number 15 on basketball for sure. He would have been 15. He would have been 15. I would have been like a Patrick Beverly. No, you wouldn't have. Yes, I would have. I got that dog in me, bro. I would have been like a Patrick Beverly. My game models like a Scottie Pippen. Trey, you don't Wait know that. We don't win. I'm out. Get hey, get, hey, come get this thing off me. My dog. Yeah. <laughs> Scotty Pippen. Dog, that's how Scotty Pippen used to say? That's how my game was, dog. T I'm nice like You know like how that. tall Scotty Pippen? You know how that long not, that Scott, mean, it has a lot to do with height, it. Sometimes height doesn't have anything to do with, with your game. With this right There's now, a lot of guys because... that are in the league. That Muggsy Bo, he's like 5'5". Five, five. Yeah, Ooh. you're not 5'5". Five, five. He said he buckets. You know what I mean? He's not, but he's not Muggsy Bo. I'm a walking. Like, I'm a walking 10'10". Walking. Walking to You're a walking headache. You're not <laughs> even, you're barely walking. I, I tell you what. I tell His body is bad, worse than yours. My man Marcellus. just got off I can, surgery. I can see. No, he yeah, just got off surgery. Because he's working. He just got off surgery. He just got off Exactly. Thank you. You know what I'm talking about? Running routes he's playing not softball. Your, your, Run, he's not supporting your crash. Man, that playing is. softball hurt himself. Knee, look, knee blew out. Look softball, at it. But softball. I, but check this out. No, no. I softball. can beat him right now. That's slow pitch. Slow pitch, slow pitch softball. Pitch, so ACL. Put I'm him on let, the table. I'm going to let him I preface and set it up to why, how he <laughs> like, but it looks. Man. Yeah, like look like I just got hurt just tripping over a base. That's not how it happened. Well, how why? did it happen then? I don't know, T.O. I, th I think you in the same sit camp your as like butt down. Gonzalez, Julius yeah. Peppers. Like, those are like two Hall of Famers. Yeah, we're exceptional athletes. But y'all also are fringe basketball NBA level. But, I, but I, guess what? You I, dominate football. Yeah, but Take I would I get both of those though. They, they can't this mess dude, with this me. This the one, huh? He, uh, different Deion, planet. Deion, different, Deion, different planet. Deion. Yeah, we are. You, you said Deion. I like that. Me and Dion. You're we're not. Are, you can't Dion are on the Kobe. same page. Yes, you can't are. put yourself in the Dion category. Back to the get your popcorn. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is what we doing. This is what we do. Yeah, what's popping right here? It's all We got. It's popping. Got my got Marcellus Wally off Fox. Um, so again, sp speaking about Fox, so how do you like doing the show with, just like I said, it's, we know it's Fox, we know it's politically correct, um, especially with your boy uh, Whitlock on there. <laughs> politically which, incorrect, the way right? we roll, but so I hear you. Are, you. are you and Whitlock kind of the opposites, you think, or like the same? Yeah, you know what? 
he's a unique thinker. He's not going to get in the echo chamber, so right. I respect that. He puts in the work. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not into the matchmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's funny, Michelle Beadle, Max Kellerman, uh, Kerry Champion, Jason Whitlock, like, there's no commonality, no consistency in who they are and our pairing. What happens is, uh, I think we have an authentic expression. So Whitlock feels it, Whitlock says it. And it's going to typically land in the unconventional realm. Like, whoa, mm -hmm. you think what? Typically. Uh, but it's because he's principle-based, raised off of his family values, the church, um, football. So he really aligns himself in those thoughts and beliefs. I'm a little more nuanced or, let's say, pliable based on my extremes. So I'm from Compton. Right, total different grew, world. Yeah, grew up in South Central, pre-NWA, so it was even <laughs> realer. It was so real, they had to make songs and movies about it. Already. Like, damn, this crazy. Realer than real. Realer than real. <laughs> right. So I grew up in all that kind of stuff in, you know, L.A. in the 80s, and then I go to Columbia, mm. where kids Soccer. had $25,000 a month allowances yeah. dropped off in helicopters like real wearing three suits like this to class mm -hmm. taking naps to get ready for class how mm. the hell you get to columbia oh uh, man <laughs> it, was, it was a long flight <laughs> how did i get there you know what I, I i was thinking i was gonna go to ucla um and i was gonna sign there and then i realized that's like high school 2.0 for me i'm from la go yep. to ucla yep Everybody was pumped that, oh, I'm going to a big school. That was your uh, comfort zone. Yeah. It would have been a comfort zone, I but wanted you wanted to step outside of that. Lead a nest, man. And I, I tell you, what really happened is I kind of, I did this test of uh, my friends, telling them about the big schools recruiting me. Oh, man, you're going to go up there. We're going to kick it. We're coming through the frat house. We're going to ball out, get some gloves, sweats. Yeah, that's right. not what you wanted to hear. Hey, I'm like, all right. I'm not right. mad because I'm right. 17, right. but I'm like, th then I tell the teachers, same big schools. That's amazing. Your hard work is paid off. Congratulations. Then I flipped it. I tell those teachers about Columbia. They're like, stop. You can go to Columbia? Go, go, go. 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 Trust right, me. Right, Life's yeah. going to be different. Right, go, right, right. you go. Then I told my friends about Columbia, and they sealed the deal. I tell my friends, I'm going to Columbia. They're like, where the hell that at? South right. America? Right. Like, I'm right. like, yeah, it is. is. Yeah, <laughs> actually, it is. I'm out. Yeah, right. So that's my point. So I had to respect not just my peers, but actually the teachers, counselors, the elders mm -hmm. who knew better. So I went there and man, being in New York City, that, that'll that get you, that's a recruiting trip in itself. Yeah, so it got me. So I, yeah, I think, yeah, your take on like, obviously Whitlock and what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And I think now, like, even when I watch, you know, guys like Ryan Clark and a lot of other athletes, Keyshawn and these guys, and, yeah. and as you said, you know, some guys, they kind of, you know, they're in that echo chamber, but it's just like, I feel like they're doing the audience a disservice when they just kind of piggyback. When they've been in those locker rooms, they played the game, and they should offer a different perspective to those people that are watching, these millions of people, viewers that are watching, okay. so they can understand more so than just jumping on the bandwagon of everybody else. Yeah. Let it be known. You can, you're you on there for a reason, so you should be able to articulate and get your point across Man. without bashing or, you know, Downplaying, downplaying, you know yeah. what it really is, Man. and so that's what that's that's why I feel like a show like ours, you know, get your popcorn ready. We often are a different perspective. We're coming off the cuff, but we're keeping it real. We're keeping it authentic. Yeah, and I, think and I don't think a lot of people understand that you can be one hundred, right, and, and still have a job. Have a job, <laughs> like cats. One, you you're doing yourself and your audience a disservice, as you said. Right. Two, you're making this work where it shouldn't be work it should just be a display of who you are and your thoughts on whatever's coming your way in question or topic so it's crazy I, I hate this when I'm on air with somebody and they say something then we get off air and they be like but for real and I'll be like but for real you should have said, said that, that yeah, while exactly. you were right you know there and, and the now, exactly. now let me support them and why they don't one there's an anxiety of losing your job because you won't be able to properly support your thought if it's not with the crowd. Mm -hmm. So people don't spell check and thought check right, when right, you right, say right. what everybody else is saying. So they get lazy and they also get safe. Mm -hmm. But if you actually do the work and you have a belief and confidence in what you're saying and how you can say it, and can support man, pop that. off all day and every day because there is someone sitting there like, 
as soon as you say the real, you're going to activate me. Mm. So that's how, like, the whole Kaepernick stuff yeah. started okay. with a lot of people. Yeah. people and for years, everybody was like, yeah, go Cap. Yeah, go cap. Then finally, Cap was like, Straddling the man, pants. hold on, dog. That, that's some BS that. right, right there. That yeah. part, that part, that right. part. Now, it went from it went from 100 to zero in terms, of especially our people talking mm -hmm. bad about Cap. To now, it's it's move by move. People are like, I don't know. I don't some know. people are not blindly in solidarity. Anymore. Point in case when I made the the statement when I said, Hey, Stephen A. Max Kellerman seemed blacker than you. That I was wrong. <laughs> you were wrong for that. Even but though I, I, I'm glad, I'm, I love the the audacity to say it. But yeah, let me but, but explain. Damn, Tommy, let me, but let me Tommy, explain. All right, let me so, let you explain. So let me explain you were wrong what for I that, let me explain what I meant by that. All right. Based on the discussion they were having, Max Kellerman seems to have a better understanding at what was going on. Yeah. Better than Stephen A. And now that all this stuff is other stuff has come out, the fact that no, now he was behind the scenes trying to help Kelp, and then all this mm -hmm. uh, the waiver, this, that, and the other. Right, right. That's why <laughs> I felt like he was doing not really just really the black people, the, the community a disservice by saying, oh, then he tried to justify like, well, T, T, oh, I've, I've supported you, this, that, and the other. But that had that was apples and oranges. That has mm -hmm. nothing, nothing to do, to do with, with this Cal Cal okay. situation. Okay. I'm going to say this. Now, Max is my dog, Stephen A. Got love for him. That's my man. <sighs> you got to remember this. It's easy to be a soldier when there's no war. Mm -hmm. Remember this when you're starting to say, a white person knows more about the black, black person. person's experience. But that's what I did. Oh, let me tell you right. why. That, but that's that's why. He never has to deal with those microaggressions, the, the consequences, the penalties that Stephen A. had to live through all day, every day. So even if he comes to a different summation in his experiences, they still fall under the umbrella of being black. Our problem is, and I heard someone say this recently, that we have confused unity with uniformity. So unity is like we all gonna sit here and fight for the same goal in different ways. Uniformity is we gotta fight the same way. No, we don't. We need to stop with this whole like, you a sellout, you a coon, you, you Uncle Tom, or you ain't black enough when you do it differently. It's not about that. Like, you already, Stephen A, no matter what he does, he can't erase his blackness. No, right. I yeah. respected your point because you actually highlighted something I agree with. There are levels to this. Like, like, like this whole, like, I, I have friends that are Irish German. They say that. <laughs> black people don't go around saying I'm black and white. No, right. not at all. And if your mama sitting there looking at you and she white and she don't hear that you white also, mama like, what's up, how young you doing? fella? <laughs> don't forget the other half, right? Yeah. So uh, look, this is going to be way deeper than what we are. But in, 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 in respect to what you said, you touched on something. But I think you offended them because it's like, right. I deal with the consequences no, no, I all get, day. And I, day. and I told them, I said, I said it tongue in cheek. So it wasn't like I would just maliciously saying it. You gonna smile next time you tongue in cheek? I did. I laughed. I did. Yeah, go I mean, back. I, yeah, go back. Yeah, go back. And, yeah, go back I and knew I, where you were coming right, from. Right, but I, but I, cause I, I know Stephen A. So I was like, yo, and I, I even explained. I said, dude, I said it tongue in cheek. I mean, yeah. I was laughing kind of when I said it. But he ain't but laughing again, he now. Took yeah, a, the heat of the room was right. But the thing is, he took a, he took offense to it because every, at this time it's what Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah, everybody's yeah. going at his neck. So now everybody has questioned his blackness. And now yeah. the fact that pretty much I've said what a lot of people were thinking. Yeah, yeah, real. That's why I loved it. Because I was like, you kept it 100, but woo. We're going right. to keep it 100 <laughs> on GPR with your boy, Marcellus Wiley. My dog. Appreciate respect, it, baby. Man. Get your we popcorn you. ready, Look buddy. Look at you. South side. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, uh, huh? My dog. Appreciate it, man. Man, what's up with that top 100? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he ain't on it. That's what's up.